Hey guys, Dan here. This is Dan Reviews. Welcome to my spoiler-free review for the new G.I. Joe film, Snake Eyes. It's a prequel uh, that takes a look at the origins of the Snake Eyes character. Uh, and this was just in theaters weeks ago. It premiered, but uh, already you can get it at home for your on-demand home viewing on Amazon Prime or iTunes, wherever you get your on-demand films at home. That's sort of the way things are going this uh, this year and last year after COVID. It will go in theaters for a few short weeks, and then uh, if it doesn't do that well, will already be available for home viewing. So you can check out Snake Eyes at home if you wish. But before we get into the review... I want to welcome you to Dam Reviews It. Thank you for finding this video. Please consider subscribing down below there, maybe even hitting that notification bell to check out all of my uh, new videos whenever they pop up uh, every day or two. We've got movies, we've got TV, sometimes even food reviews. You never know what you're going to find on the channel. So let's get into this review. So Henry Golding uh, from Crazy Rich Asians and Last Christmas, he plays the title character here, Snake Eyes, um, who in this uh, version of the story... As a uh, very young boy of, I don't know, maybe eight or so, uh, watches his father be killed and uh, there gets sort of the nickname of Snake Eyes uh, based on something that happens in that first scene. Uh, and then we, we see him as a grown-up uh, trying to avenge uh, his father's death. He gets recruited into the uh, this secret clan called uh, the Arashkaj, um, or Arashikaj. And uh, some of the people in that uh, include uh, Andrew Koji as uh, Tommy Arash Kiyaj, uh Samara Weaving. We, we know and love her from different things. Uh, she plays Major O'Hara um, and a few other people as well. Um, so, look, I am not the hugest of G.I. Joe fans. I uh, watched definitely the second G.I. Joe movie. I think maybe I saw the first one. Um, but look, I'm a kid of the 80s. It was all over the place when I was a kid. I remember playing with the action figures. Um, the cartoon show, I never got super into, but my older brother watched all of that kind of stuff. Um, you know, Thundercats and Transformers and G.I. Joe. So I, I have been aware of the lore, you know, basically forever with that. So, all right, fine. So, I, you know, I'm familiar with Snake Eyes through that. Um... I thought the movies were okay. Again, I'm not even sure if I saw the first one, but the second one with The Rock was all right. You know, I, I didn't hate watching it, but that was about 10 years ago or something, and I never had any desire to watch it again. So it sort of falls in that camp. But look, these are all sort of under the umbrella of dumb action movies. Um, so I don't think we're looking for a lot of, you know, hard content or, um, you know disseminations about culture or anything like that with these movies. And you definitely don't get any of that here. This is uh, a lot of action, probably too many action sequences, if I'm being honest, because um, it takes away from the story, which the story is not very good to begin with, but it, it makes it even harder to follow because there's so little of it. it. It just goes from action sequence to action sequence, especially in the like final 40 minutes, maybe the last third or so of the movie. It's just almost nonstop action. And so the plot just sort of caves in on itself. And by the end, you you don't even know what you're watching or what's happening. The the, the camera is like shaking all over the place. Um, there's, you know, the classic slow-mo shots. It's very sort of dark and, and dimly lit um, in, in m most of those action scenes. Now, in the beginning, it's a little more palatable. We see sort of uh, Snake Eyes going through all these different tests to prove he's, you know, worthy to uh, to enter the clan. Um, but, uh, you know, as, as it goes on, it just sort of collapses on top of itself. So uh, I, I didn't love that. I, I found it a bit hard to follow. And look, dumb action movies should be very simple to follow, right? We, we shouldn't try too hard to have to think about really anything. We should just be like, okay, this guy's after this dude, and, you know, this lady's gonna go after this dude, and, and whatever, and, oh, they're, they're, now they're jumping from this place to this place, like, okay, fine. It, it's really check your brain at the door stuff, and so here, I, I feel like they didn't even try to do anything with, with character development, major plot points, uh, nothing like that. There is, I guess, a little bit of character development, um, with the Snake Eyes character, because obviously, 
we see him, you know, as a young boy watching his dad get murdered and then moving into the present day. Yes, okay, there's a little bit of backstory there. We find out a couple of backstory things about some other uh, members uh, of this group as well, but for the most part, not so much. Um, and it all ends up sort of just being a seemingly, you know, intentioned reboot for a new G.I. Joe franchise. Maybe featuring Henry Golding as Snake Eyes and uh, whoever else, you know, being G.I. Joe. Because it has been, like I said, probably close to a decade since the last movie, the previous G.I. Joe entry. So why not? You know, the Transformers movies aren't really doing anything right now. They're sort of at a lull. So why don't we make more G.I. Joe movies? We got to sell toys somehow. So let's make a movie based around that. Um, and, you know, it could have been maybe better than the material if... Henry Golding had any kind of charisma or, you know, and, and it's funny because I really liked him in those two rom-coms I mentioned. Crazy Rich Agents is just a great movie all around, but he was very good in it and he's, you know, really good in Last Christmas as well. So, you know, what went wrong here? Well, maybe he's just not an action star, you know, and it's funny. Nick Cage, who also did a movie called Snake Eyes, you know, about 20 years ago, I think the same thing about him. Like, I, I make fun of Nick Cage all the time, right? I think he's a very bad actor. But he proves time and time again that he is good in dramatic roles with a good script. But in action movies, I just never buy him. He's so over the top. He's just so, you know, laughable. And here, Henry Golding isn't over the top. He's whatever the opposite of that is. He's understated. Um, you know, he just seems uh, almost bored sometimes. So, uh, again, same result, you know, a terrible performance, but, um, you know, with, with different reasons. But, yeah, he just uh, just doesn't seem to be a good action star. Um, but, look, he seems like a likable dude, so I'm not going to, you know, say anything about him personally. But, you know, I, I think stick to the rom-coms or something like that. I, I think that's kind of where he should be. This this action stuff, at least in this particular case, just did not work. Um, now, I will say the uh, set pieces are interesting. There's some some kind of very cool, um, you know, looking scenes and stuff like that, but it just, it the movie just never comes together. So um, there, there's not too much more to say. If you love the G.I. Joe movies, uh, maybe you'll get something more out of this than I did. Um, I, I would say I'm a, I wouldn't even say a casual fan um, a casual observer, maybe, of G.I. Joe over the last, you know, 30, 35 years, but, um, you know, fan, maybe not, but I can appreciate, like, that, you know, Channing Tatum rock movie, that was okay, um, but this one was just a miss for me. I leave Snake Eyes with a D. All right, so that's gonna do it. Uh, a bunch of kind of, like, middling to lousy reviews the last week or so on the channel, but, you know, this is the season for that. August is sort of the, the dump month for studios, so hopefully we will see uh, s some other things as the months uh, move into the holidays. I will point out, I purposely uh, wanted to do this review before seeing uh, Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings, the new Marvel movie, because, you know, these both have sort of a very, um, you know, Asian atmosphere to them and you know m most of the cast in, in shang chi is asian american actors um and sort of the same thing with this film i wanted to give this one the benefit of the doubt because i've heard i, I have a couple friends that already saw Ch shang chi and really enjoyed it so i'm like okay well i better watch snake eyes and review it before i even see that because i, I don't want to compare and contrast um but it turns out it doesn't matter because this movie stinks no matter what you're comparing it to. So I stick with my D there. All right, thank you for watching, and we'll see you back here next time on Damn Reviews It. Bye.